Thanks, Chris, uh, <laughs> for the introduction. Um, this is meant to be an audience participation talk. Do not be polite. Do not wait to the end to ask questions. If you have questions along the way, feel free to ask. Uh, if I feel it's going to take us too much off target, then I'll, I'll tell you to wait to the end. But, but uh, anyway, don't be polite. Um, for the last, I don't know, some number of years, uh, I've been trying to get more realistic models of game theory and decision theory that take into account issues of language and issues of computation. Chris mentioned my work on ambiguity. That's part of it. Um, done lots of work on adding computation to game theory. And this is back to languages. So this is sort of a mix of decision theory, language, and, and logic, um, trying to convince real game theorists and decision theorists they should take language seriously. Um, so let me give you, I'm not going to assume you know any game theory. Uh, again, feel free to ask questions if in doubt. So in standard game theory, utility depends on outcomes. So utility is how happy you are, um, the goodness of an outcome. But this doesn't account for many features of the situation that de determine how an agent feels. I mean, your beliefs determine how you feel. Your expectations determine how you feel. Feelings like guilt and surprise determine how you feel. So we're going to try to capture that. And we're going to try to capture that by saying your utility depends on the description of the game or the de decision problem in some language. And I mean language the way, for the purpose of this talk, the way logicians mean it. Um, and as we'll see, this generalizes standard game theory. I'll make that precise. That's the special case where the language describes only the strategies that the players use. Uh, it generalizes something called psychological games. This is work in, in, in the game theory literature, the, the GPS of Ginocopolis, uh, Pierce and Stichetti, who are all quite well-known economists. There's been more recent work by Battigali and Dufenberg. Again, these are economists. So it's not like economists don't understand there's other issues that matter. Uh, that's the case where the language is extended to allow beliefs. Um, there's something called reference-dependent preferences, which has been um, sort of a very big deal recently in, in the practical econ community. This is Kusagi and Rabin. Matt Rabin is you know, one of these people touted for a future Nobelist kind of thing. And in this case, the language can depend on expected outcomes as well as actual outcomes. So you're walking to a store, you want to buy shoes, you have some expectation of what the price will be. And your utility depends in part, this seems quite reasonable, on how the actual price compares to the price that you were expecting the shoes to be. Are they on sale? Is it a bargain? That makes you feel better. Um, quite independent of the fact you got the shoes for $10, you got the shoes for $10 or maybe $100 when you were expecting to pay $150. Right? So that affects your utility. So what's the difference between what we're doing in standard game theory? Well, it turns out something we didn't realize. Originally, we are just trying to capture psychological games, thinking we could do this better. Uh, 